Well, flooding remains a huge problem in the Carolinas after, in the aftermath of Florence. Joining us now, Jerry Howard, National Association of Home Builders. He's the CEO there. And Jerry, first I want to just get a sense of how, how are you building uh, new homes? Uh, you know, are, are, are home builders now taking into account the severity of these storms? Because each subsequent storm seems to bring another level of damage. And you, you, people are saying, can these homes be built better? Well, every locality, or in some instances, every state, has a building code. And home builders and insurance people, professionals, they all have input into uh, the building codes in the different states. So, yeah, they're getting better and better. They're getting more effective. Um, we're seeing, even in the storms last year, that the homes that were built most recently are the ones that are withstanding really? the storms better than the homes that were built earlier. Oh, because I mean, one of the criticisms is that home builders built to the minimum, to the standard itself, but not, not beyond the standard, right? Uh, you know, some, some home builders, I don't want to paint a, a brush, you know, and a lot of folks say they prefer older homes when, uh, that, I don't know, is it a myth that the older homes are built better and more sturdy? Oh, yes, absolutely. The standards today, the codes today are much more stringent. In fact, in some areas, there weren't codes 15, 20, 30 years ago. People could build whatever they wanted. Home builders will build to the codes. If the home buyer wants to go above code, a home builder is willing to do that. Charles, I'll tell you, home builders can build to withstand virtually any kind of storm situation. The question is, could a home buyer afford to buy a home that's built like that? Or would a home buyer want to live in a home that's built sure. like that? Sure. I mean, and I lived in, you know, in, in, in Guam and Okinawa, Japan, and you know, I lived in concrete houses, right? Right. So, so, yeah, we want them to be beautiful, functional, not expensive, and also withstand storms. So it's a, it's, a, it's a tall hurdle, but we do need something to approaching that, it feels like. And that's where the code-making process is so important. Every three years, or in some cases every six years, depending on which state or locality you're talking about, the codes are revised, they're examined, and they're improved upon. And it's a process that we take great pride in participating in. Now, obviously, the aftermath of the storm, will, will, there will be needs for, for home rebuilding. Home, homes are going to be washed away. And we already see one of the big in, industry issues for you is a lack of labor, uh, tight labor constrictions. I mean, it, this, this is going to just magnify that problem, isn't it? There's no question about that. In fact, unfortunately, some of the areas that were impacted last year and in Louisiana, Hurricane Katrina, some of those haven't been fully rebuilt yet. The tight labor standards are going to hurt, and the cost of materials uh, is really going to hurt, too. Of all sectors, all niches of the economy, and I watch it very closely, I comb through every, all the data points, and I know you have your housing market index coming out tomorrow morning. Why does it feel like home, the housing market is at least inconsistent at best right now? Well, we've never fully recovered from the recession. We're only at about 66% capacity. And there are some very strong headwinds which are leading to that inconsistency. You mentioned one, labor. The other is the cost of materials um, from the, the tariffs. Uh, both lumber prices have Canadian the lumber roof. prices. Yeah. They've come back down now, but they're still above what they should be. Uh, the, the tariff that the president put on uh, Chinese goods in August, there are some 500 products that are used in home building that are impacted by those tariffs. And then interest rates are going up now, too. So we've got sort of a triple threat that, that makes us a little bit uneasy. One issue I'm worried about beyond short-term things like perhaps tariffs and, uh, and, and things like that, the, the lower end, there's no supply there. Where's the starter home coming from? How do we get a young family into the system, into the homeowner system, uh, without any starter homes, it feels like the average house is around 300, 350 thousand. You know, you look at Dart and some of these other guys. Uh, that's expensive for a young family who wants to move out of the city or they want to get out of the rent trap. It's it's a it's a national crisis right now. Housing affordability again because of the cost of construction, the cost of complying with some of the very codes we're talking about, as well as the cost of materials and financing, is becoming a real real issue. I expect this will be an issue in the 16 elections, but more importantly in the 2020 election, housing affordability and the ability of Americans to get the American dream of home ownership is going to be a front burner. Yeah, I think so too. Midterms and 2020, Jerry. Thanks Great a talking. lot. Good, Good seeing you. Appreciate it.